The S&P 500 and the Nasdaq recover sharply from Wednesday's sell-off following a hotter-than-expected March CPI print of 0.4%. European markets close with losses after the ECB keeps interest rates unchanged at 4%. Stocks in the Asia-Pacific have opened mixed ahead of the release of China's trade data for the month of March. The GIF Nifty is indicating a lower start for the Indian markets. Crude prices correct about a percent. Brent trades around $90 a barrel as inflation fears overshadow geopolitical concerns in West Asia. Gold continues to rally to over $2,300 an ounce on safe haven buying and softer than expected producer price inflation in the United States. All eyes will also be on the inflation data back home. A CNBC TV18 poll suggests retail inflation in March will drop to 4.85% from 5.09% in February on easing food prices and a higher base, while factory output for the month of February is seen rising to 5.92% from 3.8% in January. And the fourth quarter earnings season gets underway today with software giant TCS set to report numbers this evening. The IT bellwether is expected to report industry-leading constant currency growth of 1.3%, while margins are expected to dip in the fourth quarter. Good morning and welcome to Power Breakfast here on CNBC TV 18 in the Mumbai News Center. I am Hormus Fatakia and it's a Friday morning today. So let's first take a look at how the Asian markets are faring this morning. It's a slightly mixed start to the trading day. The Asian markets have opened mixed and remember we are coming on the back of a holiday. So the Taiwanese index is absolutely flat. The Hang Seng though is down over a percent as we speak. Now some important data points that emerged yesterday and today from the Asian markets. The Bank of Korea kept its interest rate steady at around 3.5%. Some CPI data from China as well, that data eased uh, the rising 0.1% compared to a 0.7% increase in February. The producer price index from China also fell 2.8% but it was in line with expectations. And the Japanese yen which is also in focus which is recovering against the dollar after hitting a 34 year low over the last two days. Now for handover from the US markets as well, we'll be reacting to two days of trading in the US. Wall Street ended Thursday's trading session mixed. The Dow closed nearly flat but with a negative bias but the S&P 500 ended 7 tenths of a percent higher and the tech heavy Nasdaq gained nearly 300 points. The producer price index, a measure of the wholesale inflation, rose 0.2% for the month of March, which was less than the estimates of 0.3%. Meanwhile, the consumer price index, a key inflation gauge, rose 3.5% in March, which was higher than expectations and marked an acceleration for inflation. CNBC's Steve Kovac gets us a wrap of all the action on Wall Street. U.S. markets rallied on Thursday, finishing mixed across the major indexes as investors poured money into tech stocks and rebounded from an earlier pullback over inflation concerns. The Dow lost two points, the S&P 500 added 38 points, and the tech-heavy Nasdaq gained 272 points. Wholesale prices rose again this month. The closely watched inflation gauge known as the Producer Price Index increased more than 2 percent in March compared to this time last year. That's according to the Labor Department. March saw the biggest gains from the services sector, and the market seemed to take the numbers in stride compared to yesterday when the consumer price index came in higher than expected and sparked a sell-off. And Sam Bickman fried today filed an appeal of his conviction and 25-year prison sentence. The FTX founder was sentenced last month for stealing $8 billion from the now bankrupt cryptocurrency exchange. Bickman fried has also asked to stay in a Brooklyn detention center during his appeal instead of being transferred to a California prison to serve out his sentence. That's what's happening here in the U.S. Back to you, Mumbai. And staying with the U.S. markets, let's listen to some important reactions on the key U.S. inflation data that came in for the month of March and what the Federal Reserve's next move could be. We thought it was going to be a low 0.3 and it ended up being 0.4. And since it was already, I think, a little bit cuspy whether they would cut in June with this, it seems less likely. So Could still happen, but it's not my expectation. As I said, I think it's possible that they cut in June and you could still get three cuts. I think that, that certainly could happen. But likewise, it's also possible that it moves back further. I mean, it's always very dependent on how the data come in. I think it tells you a lot more about the Fed 
then it tells you necessarily about the underlying adjustment in the economy. We're still recovering from understanding what went on with the pandemic. We don't really understand what the open borders policy has done to immigration. There are a lot of things where I think they wait, need to wait and see. And the thing they definitely have to look at is inflation. Uh, they want to see inflation come down. They don't want to be the cause of a big recession. They don't want to wait too long. But on the other hand, the signals just aren't screaming out to do a rate cut soon. And uh, I, I, I'm sure the Fed governors are adjusting their expectations of how many rate cuts they're going to do down for this year. But I also think they're probably starting to rethink this issue of where are they going to end up. Look at what they expect at the beginning of the year. Even Goldman Sachs was saying six rate cuts, et cetera. I mean, I, I think you have to step back here and take the look from 30,000 feet. What's the objective of the Fed? It's to wipe the egg off their face for when they let the inflation horse out of the barn, as I like to say. They brought it back into the corral, a little distempered, uh, and needs to calm down. And until that happens, they're going to just keep rates pretty much where they are, in my opinion. And let's get to the final update in our global market wrap this morning. Weak cues coming in from the European markets, though. The French CAC lost about 22 points. The German DAX slipped over 140 points, while the British FTSE closed with losses of 37 points on Thursday. The pan-European stock 600 index closed four-tenths of a percent lower, led by losses in banking stocks. The stock 600 banking index fell 2.5%, marking its steepest one-day drop in over eight months. In important cues coming in from the region, the European Central Bank left interest rates unchanged at record highs, but sent a clear sign that the ECB may be preparing to cut rates as inflation in the eurozone continues to fall. Let us listen into what ECB President Christian Lagarde had to say on the bank's rate path and the outlook on inflation. If our updated assessment of the inflation outlook, the dynamics of underlying inflation and the strength of monetary policy transmission were to further increase our confidence that inflation is converging to our target in a sustained manner, it would be appropriate to reduce the current level of monetary policy restriction. In any event, we will continue to follow a data-dependent and meeting-by-meeting -meeting approach to determining the appropriate level and duration of restriction. And we are not pre-committing to a particular rate path. And that's all the global market action that we have today. But how will all of these cues over the last two days impact the Indian markets? We have our research team joining in with how the trade setup looks like, the stocks to watch out for, and some important FNO cues to track in as well. Good morning, guys. Vivek, first up, what are the cues that you are picking up this morning? It was a mixed handover from Wall Street. Good morning. You're right. Um, so, number one, you know, given the fact that uh, we now have to factor in uh, two days of a handover, both Wednesday as well as Thursday, to account for, you know, before we start today's uh, trading session. First up, you know, on Wednesday, like we mentioned, you know, very weak handover from the U.S., but yesterday, things cooled off a little bit. Uh, so now, yesterday, you know, what's actually happened is that Nasdaq closed at a fresh record high. So there is some positive cues coming in as far as our own markets are concerned. The oil prices on Thursday actually cooled off a little bit, WTI low by a little over 1.3 percent at the $85 a barrel mark. Now, let's look at the Indian markets on you know, how they ended on Wednesday and how they are likely to open today given the handover that we've received. So first up, you know, Wednesday, Indian markets managed to go ahead and climb fresh record highs, and they managed to close to over there. Uh, which were the ones that actually did well? Number one, the broader end of the market outperformed benchmark indices, 11 straight days of uh, straight gains is what we saw. After that, a brief pause, and then once again, you know, the mid-cap and small-cap indices started rallying. Uh, which were the sectors that did well? You know, it was the usual suspects. Metals continued to rally quite well. Uh, two fresh additions, you know, in terms of sectors that rallied. Number one was the chemical pack. The entire pack did very well. And on the back of slightly uh, cooling off as far as oil prices was concerned, you did see the entire OMC pack too do very well in the session. Market breadth, as expected, favored advances in the 5 is to 4 ratio. Uh, Asian markets today are indicating a mixed start. Gift Nifty, after factoring in both Thursday as well as Friday, is indicating a gap down start. But remember, some important cues today as well. Number one, TCS results. And number two, Bharti Exacom IPO will list today. And all eyes will be on that as well. 
a gap down start indeed thanks a lot vivek for joining in and over to sudarshan now who will list out the stocks to watch out for this morning good morning sudarshan i am sure vodafone idea is stopping your charts today Morning, Omar. So, yeah, first up is word of an idea. Company is looking to raise up to rupees eighteen thousand crore via FPO. That is follow on public offer, and it will open on April eighteen and close on April twenty two. And for the same, capital raising committee will be meeting today to discuss the price band. Next is Sun Pharma. US FDA has classified Dadra unit inspection as official action indicated. That means regulatory action can be recommended now. Remember, this plant was issued six observations in the inspection that was done in December twenty twenty three. Next is Metropolis. It has given quarterly business update. Q4 revenue growth was up 10% year on year. Core business revenue was up 15% year on year. Even margin has increased due to increase in volume and price. And company says it has now become debt free. Doctor Reddy, Doctor Reddy's it has launched drug free migraine management device Nerevio in Germany and will launch in South Africa later this month, followed by launch in Spain and UK. Unominda has secured land parcel in IMT Kharkhoda for greenfield alloy wheel plant and will be investing investing rupees 542 crore in five years. Phoenix Mills has given quarterly business update. Q4 total consumption was up 27% year on year and gross retail collections were up 37% year on year. Cams has received certificate of authorization to operate as an online payment aggregator from RBI. Tata Motors, its armed Tata passenger electric mobility, has signed agreement with Shell to set up public charging stations for electric vehicles. Last is NTPC. Money Control has reported that NTC, NTPC Green has shortlisted investment bankers for its rupees 10,000 crore IPO. Long list indeed. Thanks a lot, Sudarshan, for joining in. And lastly, Nigel, who was giving us a thumbs up at the start of the segment, is joining in with some important FNO cues. Nigel, I don't think the gift nifty is reflecting your sentiments this morning. Well, that's right. You know, it's going to be a bit of a challenge uh, for the bulls, but the bulls have been biting into these challenges. So I expect more of the same. Actually, if we're going to start off 150 points lower, maybe it gives you a bit of an entry opportunity. And the line in the sand is going to be the 22,400 odd mark. The ones that be that's been the big outperformer has been the Nifty Bank. That's been outperforming. There was fresh long build up even in uh, you know. Even in Wednesday's trading session, and that will have to bat for the bull. So that's going to be the crucial index. What do the FIs do? Well, they added more longs. Uh, they added close to 40,000 long contracts. And if you pull up the net short positions, you know you'll just see that from being net short of around 20, 25,000 contracts, that's moved into a net long now, 51,000 net long contracts, and that's the crucial one out there. Personally, I prefer uh, you know when the markets are net short. Because that gives you reason to see a bit of a short covering bounce. But if it's a market that's devoid of any kind of short positions, well, that's a bit of an issue for me. But the trend is still up, so we'll stick to that. What about the PCR? That as well is moving to the upper end of the range. The upper end of the range is around 1.6 or it's at around 1.32. So we'll have to keep an eye out on that mark as well. And it appears there's a bit of a strategy that's playing out in the near term. So the 22,700 put should come up for you on the screen. 22,700 call as well as put. Now between them, on an average, the premium will be closer on 300 rupees. So someone who's writing this, which is known as a short straddle at around this 22,700 odd mark, they are playing for 300 points higher than 22,700 and 20 and 300 points lower. So that's the broad range that we're looking at. The 20 DMA that becomes a bit of a reference point. So that's the number that comes up for you in the screen. But uh, and uh, the stock that I'm looking at is Bandhan Bank. It comes out of the FNO band. So keep an eye out on that one. Let's see how this goes. Back to you guys. Thanks a lot, Nigel, for joining in. Bandhan Bank, indeed, the stock to watch out for as it exits the band today. But time for a short break here on Power Breakfast. A whole host of cues are lined up through the day. The March CPI, February IIP, and TCS's fourth quarter earnings. More on all of that on the other side. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Back with us on Power Breakfast, and earnings season is back. IT Bellwether TCS will be reporting its fourth quarter earnings later this evening. Rima is now joining in to get us up to speed with the earnings expectations from the company. Rima, good morning. What is expected from TCS this time around? Hi, good morning. So first, let's get the numbers out of the way. Now, TCS is likely to report a dollar revenue growth of 1.6 percent on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. We also look at the constant currency revenue growth, which is stripped of all the forex fluctuation. Here, the sequential revenue growth is seen at 1.3 percent, but the broad range that I captured was close to about 1 to 1.8 percent. Uh, the reason why growth for TCS is likely to be ahead of peers this time is on account of two reasons. One, the continuation of ramp up of the BFS, uh, sorry, the BSNL deal, and two. 
perhaps that you know BFSI is going to show you some green shoots and a quarter on quarter recovery. Now moving on to margin. Now TCS's wage hikes for its employees is effective 1st of April. So every year in the April quarter we see the margins decline on account of the wage hike impact and this time we are working with an EBIT number of 23.8%. The profit, according to the poll, should be up 3%, but here we're looking at the profit adjusted for the epic case provision that the company made in the prior quarter. Uh, so adjusted for that, profits should be up close to about 3%. Now, what is the street going to watch? Are the deal wins still very strong? In the current quarter, the company had announced an Aviva deal, which was expected to be a large deal. So according to Kotak estimates, in fact, the deal wins could be above $10 billion. But deal wins, strong deal wins indicate a future revenue visibility. Two, discretionary demand. Is discretionary spending coming back? The company does not give you annual guidance, so I think qualitative comments surrounding that. Recovery in pockets like North, uh, North America, BFSI, communication, high tech, which was under pressure. And finally, is hiding coming back? Because TCS's headcount has been steadily coming down. Back to you. We'll keep an eye out on all of that. Thanks a lot, Rima, for joining in. TCS kickstarting the earnings season later this evening. But back to macros now. And India's CPI and IIP data are scheduled to be released today. Economists expect the inflation to have eased to 4.85% in March. The industrial production index is also expected to have seen strong growth in February. Ritu is joining in with the key expectations. Ritu. Thanks for that. Let me start with the inflation data where CPI for the month of March is expected to have eased to a five month low of 4.85% according to a CNBC TV 18 poll. Now this compares with the CPI print of 5.09% that we saw in February and 5.66% in March of last year. Now this fall in inflation is expected broadly because of the cut in LPG prices, some easing in momentum across food and core items and it will also be helped by the base effect to some extent. Core inflation, which is inflation excluding food and fuel, is also expected to continue to ease. That is seen at 3.27% in March, according to our poll, compared to 3.37% in February. Food and beverages inflation, that is seen at 7.83%. The deflation in fuel and light is also expected to deepen in March with the reduction of LPG prices. Remember, RBS forecast for the fourth quarter of FY24 is at 5%. And so, if inflation in March comes around this 4.85% poll figure we have, it will largely be in line with RBI's projections. On IIP, our poll suggests a growth of 5.92%, uh, stronger than the 3.8% that we saw in January. All of the key sectors, electricity, manufacturing, mining, they are expected to record a higher growth in February compared to January. Now, we have the eight core industries that account for more than 40% of the weight of items, including in IIP, coming in at 6.7% in February compared to 4.1% in January. And IIP is also expected to see a similar growth trajectory. So expect improvement in both of the macro data points. CPI at a five-month low of 4.85%. And IIP at a four month high of 5.92%. Ritu Singh there with all the expectations from the CPI and the IIP numbers later this evening. Moving on, Tesla CEO Elon Musk will visit India later this month to meet Prime Minister Narendra Modi on the 22nd of April in New Delhi. A news report on Reuters suggests that he is expected to make an announcement on plans to invest and open a new factory in the country. Elon Musk's team is in conversation with the state governments in Gujarat, Maharashtra, Uttar Pradesh and Telangana. While Tesla may take more time to finalize a location, news reports say that India's sales and operations may begin by the end of 2024. And let's slip into a short break. On that note, up next we get you cues from the commodities market. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to Power Breakfast on CNBC TV 18. Let's now get you the latest updates on the West Asia conflict. Israeli forces are on high alert amid fears that Iran will retaliate after an Israeli strike on the Iranian consulate in Syria, which killed two of its generals and six guard officers a few days ago. Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said that they are prepared for any scenario and also warned that Israel will not hesitate to strike if provoked. US President Joe Biden has promised for ironclad support to Israel in in case of an Iranian attack. Foreign ministers of, the, of Germany, the United Kingdom, Turkey and other West Asian nations persuaded the Iranian foreign minister, urging restraint and to lower tensions with Israel. Meanwhile, German airline Lufthansa has suspended flights to Tehran amid fears of a potential attack. And Manisha Gupta now joins in with all the updates from the commodity space. Good morning, Manisha. Gold prices continue to rally, but crude seems to have cooled off a bit. Well, yes, but I'll talk about gold more because we're looking at very, very strong buying into this one. You know, we did see prices decline after the U.S. non-farm payroll data, but that was so short-lived. The section, uh, the segment is reacting now to the decline in dollar. There is also a decline in the U.S. Treasury yield. And then you have seen mixed signals from the producer inflation and labor data as well. So you are looking at this new surge in sense of uh, global central bank buying. The speculative trade is strong as ever. If you look at the longs versus the shorts, the longs are way higher. I mean, if you look at the shorts at 20,000 contracts, the longs are at more than 2 lakh contracts. So that's the kind of market that we are looking at. And the gold prices continue to be very, very bullish. Overheated for sure, but nobody has the courage to go short from these levels. The crude oil prices in the meanwhile have seen some bit of a buying coming in yet again today. $85 for WTI and 90 for Brent is holding. Iran is pledged to retaliate for suspected Israel airstrike on embassy in Syria and that seems to be leading some premium back into the prices. In any case, we've seen a crude prices gain up by 18% in this year with markets anticipating that $90 perhaps could become a pivot point for this quarter. 2400 now almost gold. Thanks a lot, Manisha, for joining in. And with that, we call time on this edition of Power Breakfast. Earnings, macros, there is a lot to watch out for. And Bazaar Morning Call will set you up for all of that for my, from myself and the team that put this show together. Thank you so much for watching.